Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's me again. I know <laughs> I know the last time since we posted, we gave you guys a quick update letting you know that we were expecting another baby. And four months later, we've been tending to this new baby. So it's safe to say that uh, for this long break that we've been, like not posting or anything like that. We were taking parental parental leave. So I just wanted to hop on and give you guys a quick update. Uh, so my what's wrong? As well as, you know, share my story with you guys. Uh, our Moroccan baby home birth story. So it might be quite a lengthy video, hopefully not too long. Yes, honey? Where's Samaya? She's over there. She went, <laughs> she went running around. I know. I hate when they get separated. Okay. So I will just hop right into it because it might get lengthy. So I'll try to be quick. So let's rewind all the way to... November 10th uh, in the morning I had my probably one of my last appointments for the checkup scheduled for then so I took the kids and Ibrahim he was a little tired so he stayed home that day so me and the kids went to the birthing center by the midwife to have my final checkup and that's what happened. Uh, the doctor, she checked me out. And when she checked me out, it was like a lot of digging around, which makes me think that she did a membrane sweep. I have no clue what that is, but that's what I'm thinking. But she was able to show me TMI, my mucus plug. It was like a whole, a lot of it. And then she told me it probably will be this weekend that I should expect the baby so I was like okay that's fine and then the the doc, the driver for the doctor oh that's a big baby a big bug sheesh so the driver for the doctor he brought us back home actually no it was her she brought us back home this is why I want to tell the story before it gets a bit fuzzy he took me and the kids and she brought us back and like on the way she kept asking me um, if I was feeling anything or to call her as soon as I feel something and that's just what the message and was for today for the day if I feel anything let her know and as she and as she was asking me if I was feeling anything I kind of was getting slight heavier um, what um, contractions but you know like the doctors tend to send you home in America if you have a lot of, if your contractions aren't close enough and aren't consistent. So that was it. So I just ignored the little cramps. I'm like, okay, it's probably not anytime soon. She told me this weekend, so I will wait until the weekend. Just wait it out, ignore it. It's probably going to go away. So yeah, I went home. Kids were hungry. We made some cornflakes, some cereal, and then we ate that together and as I was feeding them they were becoming heavier and heavier and it was becoming heavier and heavier and heavier oh this guy distracted me anyways so I was texting my sister as I was feeding the kids I'm like I and I think I was texting my mother-in-law too because she wanted to know how the appointment went so I was telling her that um both of them that I think that she started something. That's all I said. I think she started something. But again, she said this weekend. So I didn't, and I wasn't timing the contraction, the contractions. So I just keep telling myself, okay, this weekend is just a little bit of pain. Get over it. So, yeah. And like mid feeding them, they became super heavy and like really stinging like like they hurt so i'm like okay time to wake up ibrahim because when i came back home he was still sleeping so i said what's going on over there 
anyways so i told i i actually tried to get the kid get the kids to go wake up my husband because i didn't want to move but the kids they don't know what they're doing they try to say ibrahim whisper it while they're in the same room as i as i was so <laughs> that happened and then he got up and he's like he's always like for the first two deliveries he was always my delivery partner are you okay honey i'm heading back to the house okay why so my digged her hands in some cactus so i have to take all the horns out of her hands okay Sheesh. and ismail got bit by the cat <laughs> what the heck? Are you gonna come back? Maybe oh. not. Are you gonna come back? Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, that's fine. Bye bye. It's my your dad said to come. Did the cat bite you? Can you I see? Do you want to keep him here with you? Uh -huh. Do you want to stay here? Uh -huh. um, I'm afraid you're gonna lose him. Okay. Okay, I guess. Are you sure? Yeah. You better come back with him. Yeah. This way I'm talking, okay? I'm making that. You going with Dada? You want to go with Dada quickly? Honey, I think he's coming. You're not lost. Okay, so where was I? So I had the kids go and wake up their dad. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, I had the kids go wake up their dad and he got up, he immediately started to time the contractions but he got up pretty immediately but i'm already in a lot of pain i couldn't handle it i hate laboring but yeah i was and the kids were just being themselves they were they were a bit too loud and it was really bothering me that they were loud and i, I was just having a rough time and then i remember ibrahim he told me actually you have like another 24 hours of this you better get over it like just relax so I'm like okay he's telling the truth so even though he told me that and I got that annoyed me uh, that clicked to me like yes I opted for a natural birth I don't want any interventions or anything like that so I had to buckle up so I went from off from on the floor in pain to going to the bed and just lying down and trying to relax so that's all I did. I was breathing through the pain, trying to relax, trying to fall asleep. That was my main goal, to fall asleep because with my two babies, I had to fall asleep so I can so I can relax and stop tensing up and whatever else. But I wasn't going to sleep, but I was telling myself every time to relax when I feel like myself is like I was about to tense up, I told myself to relax, just relax. So I did that, it felt like 10 minutes, maybe less, because I went on the bed when Ibrahim decided to go take a shower because he was getting ready to, he was packing the bag, the go bag and everything, and he wanted to take a shower. So after he packed the bag, he went and got and take a shower. And while he was bathing, I got up, I felt like I needed to pee. So I went inside the washroom. I ended up doing a number two a little bit. And then there was a lot of pressure happening. So yeah, there were... Um, a lot of pressure was happening. And I just didn't want to get up to, off the toilet. Even though I used the restroom both ways. <laughs> it felt like I still needed to pee and poop. And like there was a lot of pressure going on. So something told me to reach down and see what's going on and when I touch down touch below I felt the baby's head and I said Ibrahim you have to get out of the shower now and come see what's going on I can feel the head and he was like 
I sure how you can feel the head, like you're being dramatic because I can't labor. I'm a terrible laborer. And I said, no, you have to come and see because I can feel the head. And then he came out of the shower dripping wet and he looked and then he saw the head and he went for his glasses again and I, he looked again and he saw the head and then he started putting on clothes quickly. And I, I was ready to push like, okay, the head is here. I'm in pain. I just want the pain to go away. I want to push. So he's like, wait, wait, wait. And then he went out. He, he, I was in the bathroom, but this is what he told me. He went, put on his clothes quickly. We went, knock on the neighbor's door in case, and, and I think he said to call the doctor. He probably told her to call the doctor. And actually, let me go over this. Let me think. So, uh, so he knocked on the neighbor's door and, okay, he knocked on the neighbor's door, like everyone's door, on the floor that we're on, there's like three other doors next to ours. He knocked on every door to see which one, who will answer or who's at home to answer. Anyways, uh. He went to see who was at home to answer and then this lady she came in there was like a slight language barrier we're not perfect at arabic we're still learning so eventually i don't know what happened and i don't to go over what was said between is pretty lengthy and he's not here to say exactly what happened but she came and she had a look as well and she saw the baby and she was like oh and she, and coincidentally well this is Allah's plan Allah put that for us she was pregnant as well and she had a doctor who she was attending to and she knew exactly who to call and she went and called her doctor and then she came back to kind of assist us and Ibrahim he told me to he called the midwife and he kept calling her because she was taking a bit long to come but he called her as well and okay so then he came back and more or less I was ready to push so then he was coaching me on my breathing and telling me to relax and push how I when I want to push and whatever else and the thing is too without when my first two babies I had an epidural so I couldn't really feel what was going on but I could feel I could have feel when to push like and it felt like the baby was moving down as well like I, like my everything was happening so natural I can feel the baby moving I could feel when my body wanted me to push and then I don't even think I pushed for 10 minutes maybe eight and I kept pushing and then the baby came out Ibrahim caught the baby and then he gave the baby to me and then I just wrapped her up in a towel. The lady brought a towel for us, one of our towels. And I wrapped her up while I was on the toilet. So everything happened on the toilet. I was sitting on the toilet. I pushed and delivered the baby on the toilet. And I was holding her while, while I was on the toilet. And the baby was still connected to the placenta. Um, placenta was still inside of me and then I just got a chance to breathe which was nice and Ibrahim he was hugging on me as well hugging on the baby we was hugging on each other and then I was like what is it and he didn't know either he didn't bother to check so he just lift up the to um, towel and we both saw that it was a little girl our baby so we had to, we have two girls now uh that was it uh so while i was holding on her they were trying to i wanted i was i was feeling tired and i just wanted to get up off the toilet and i keep he said i can't move here because the placenta is still inside of me and i was asking him to take it out i didn't want to uh, I was asking him to take it out because I was ready to get up and go lie down. I just wanted to go and lie down. I was feeling tired. 
I don't want to stay in the bathroom anymore. I want to just go lie down and rest. And he keeps telling me, wait, it has to come out on, my, on its own. Ask him to pull on it. He didn't want to do that either. So I had to wait until more or less it started falling down by itself. And then I pushed it up as well. And we put in a little saucer because we had no tools. We was just using what was at home. Are you the cat that bit my son? I guess the cat wanna hear. <laughs> so yeah. It was a beautiful moment, like delivering the baby home in like privately in my own environment. But Initially, we was aiming for a water birth with the midwife, so I guess it worked. Alhamdulillah, it worked out fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the somewhat hard part. This is getting up off the toilet. So the lady doctor, she did um, come. And she wanted to like um, cut the umbilical cord and I told uh, I told her not to leave it alone because that's what my midwife said to do, leave it alone. So I asked her to leave it alone. They took the baby from me, like wrapped her up and make sure that she was comfortable. And then Ibrahim, he began to lift me off the toilet and then we were going. And then apparently I fainted from all the blood loss and when I woke up, I was on the bed already. Like, I woke up and everyone telling me to wake up. And as they wake up, I'm like, I'm so calm and relaxed why it's everyone bothering me. And then my ears was ringing as well. And everyone looked so panicked. And they're like, you can't go to sleep, you can't go to sleep, stay awake. And I, w <laughs> I was tired. I was tired and I was cold. And then I, I can hear the baby crying, and was and I was asking, uh, does Amatola want to nurse? And I guess she didn't. No one brought me the baby, and I was just lying down, just trying to stay awake. But I was, I was relaxed at the same time. I felt good. <laughs> I actually felt good. Like I felt relaxed, and I wanted people to leave me go to sleep. That's all I wanted to go to sleep. They came in the in the room. I got some gummies like <laughs> I like to have my gummies so they fed me some gummies because I wanted that's what I wanted and they also gave me some dates which is nice and I guess that was for the moment that's what happened and then eventually one of the midwives that works with my midwife who I was seeing at the time she came, checked me out, tried to rub my tummy, which was extremely painful. And she was trying to scrape out, I guess, blood clots that was forming inside of me. She was trying to do that. And it was, I was fighting her a lot because I didn't want it. It was painful. And she had to keep scraping and scraping and whatever else and rubbing my tummy. And it was like quite a struggle. We struggled like that for five minutes because I just delivered a baby. I don't want you to reach inside of me. I want to relax. And everyone, my husband included, told me that she needs to reach. Hello, you watching me? That she needs to clear it out, let it do it, just relax. And then eventually, I just like cried and whatever else, like as she do it. And then I changed my clothes. They wanted to get me to the birthing center. Actually, she gave me a pitocin tablet to stop the bleeding. 
and then she helped me change my clothes and she helped me change my clothes they helped change the children's clothes everyone was getting ready and they wanted to take me to the birthing center and we did that again I had to put on my clothes they asked me how I'm feeling I'm feeling good they asked me yeah how I'm feeling I said I'm good let's go and then we started walking like my, my midwife came as well they're so sweet like hugging me and like just comforting me and I felt loved <laughs> I did feel loved but yeah so two of them was on each side I think Ibra Ibrahim had the baby and uh, he was getting the kids together and we were walking trying to get out the room and then I I guess I passed out again I was on the floor and I was cold and I said I'm cold and then my ears were ringing again the same ringing happening again my ears were ringing and apparently I passed out again I was lying down on the floor and they helped me up onto the chair and I can't, I, 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 uh, I'm stammering. I asked for the blankets so I can get warm. I wanted to be warm, but it was cold. And although I'm wearing a jacket and my socks and my shoes and I'm ready to go, I'm still feeling cold. So they put two blankets on me and I think they try to feed me some more dates and they sprinkle water on my face and I'm like what are you doing that for? It's annoying me, stop doing that, what are you sprinkle? So yeah my husband, he, he asked them to get out of the way so he can do it and then he put me on, their, on his back and he took me in the elevator, elevator and then we went down, he took me on his back and put me in the car. We drive to the house, um, the birthing center in the next city. They keep asking me if I'm okay to stay awake, and that's that's what they tell me to do: stay awake. I was holding my baby, my baby Sumaya. She was sleepy, so yeah, I hold her so she can go to sleep on me. That's fine. And we took the drive to the hospital, and. At the burning center there was like a whole bunch of stairs so i'm like oh no these people are struggling struggling to put me on their back to take me outside the house ibrahim i know he has a bad back he had to take me on his back and carry me down the elevator and now there's like the building is on the third floor there were like a whole bunch of stairs to climb up and i'm like oh gosh he gotta take me up those stairs that's me telling myself that like like i'm bothering um you know I'm heavy, it's a burden. Let me try to walk, but Ibrahim took me. He was so sweet. I guess that's what he felt he needed to do. Ask my husband, which is nice. And he took me on his back and took me all the way up the stairs. I remember thanking him, like saying, thank you, honey. Thank you. And I keep like repeating it because I know I'm heavy. <laughs> And he's doing all of this for me. It's, it's so amazing. I just felt really, really loved and cared for that day, but at the same time, it was just pretty hard knowing that I wasn't in control of my body. Mm -hmm. But they were able to put me to sit down at the birthing center actually on the birthing bed, on the little doctor table, whatever. They were checking my blood pressure, feeding me candy, making me dinner, like feeding me, rubbing on my tummy, which I hated. And they knew that I hated it. And the midwife, she was like casually coming, resting on my tummy like this and trying to talk to me and resting on my tummy. Cause you know, I didn't want her to rub on me, but she's still pushing on my tummy, which was, which was nice. Cause she's, they wanted to do what was needed to done to be they wanted to do what was needed 
to be done even though I didn't like it at the moment. Sheesh. Yeah, so that's basically it. I have they eventually put some clothes on Amatola and bring her neck near me. And I was able to see her. I think it's been like a whole hour without me actually or two hours three four with the, before I can actually hold my baby and feed her but it is what it is alhamdulillah I'm still here it's pretty scary but it was pretty beautiful so I'm a bit turned bittersweet eventually I got to hold her and that was it what are you doing behind of here? Don't cough for fur ball. Sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was it. Pretty sweet. So I can just only tell you from what I experienced. Maybe Ibrahim will share what he had to go through helping me. I knew that he sprained his wrist trying to catch me a couple of times. He said he he felt pain as he caught me when he was taking me from the bathroom because he didn't want me to fall on the ground and i guess the way how his hand was she ended up spraining it just to rescue me <laughs> he's sweet <laughs> yeah and that was it so just uh this is the first time i'm actually saying it out loud and I was pretty like I couldn't speak about it without I think about it think about it without tears coming to me because it was just a lot for me. But now I'm sharing it, no tears, so I guess I'm at peace with what happened. It could have been worse. I'm um could have been worse. I'm here. So it was a good story. It was um uh I am proud that I was able to birth naturally. I always wanted a natural birth. I think putting myself in a situation that I know I couldn't get these medical interventions helped with that process as well, as well as everything happening. Like all of this probably took an hour and a half from me f coming at home, feeding the kids, Till the baby actually coming out it probably took an hour it was a it was very quick so I'm proud about that I was able to relax and labor and baby was here that's it anyways uh well I hope you guys understood everything I tend to speak fast and low so I hope you guys could have heard I I'm, uh, don't know when I will post it probably today thank you for watching if you came here all the way to the end I appreciate you and I'm about to end this video this is outside my apartment not exactly my apartment but the complex that I'm in very beautiful Morocco has been nice to us, has been kind to us. So we will share we will share a bit more of our time here in Morocco. Assalamu alaikum. Here. Actual hands. Okay, no, trying to keep everything down. Okay, honey, can you back up a little bit? Okay, it's got me all secure. Okay. Mm -hmm. You look covering yourself. You do. So, my the excavator. Everyone, look at the superhero. Oh, honey, at you. Say hi. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. This is my the excavator. Don't mind his Ruben, he's an excavator. So honey, I did share my side of the story. Do you want to say how you felt in the moment? Hmm? Do you want to say how you felt in the moment? I didn't feel in the moment. 
I didn't get a chance to panic until after everything was finished. I just... Put on your feet, thinking, thinking. Yeah, just had to do what had to be done in the moment. The screws were going. So Maya, don't throw dirt at your mother. I remember Samaya. She was just a little kid on our lap when we started recording. Now look at her. Walking and throwing dirt. <laughs> she doesn't... Samaya will wait for me to hold his hand. Samaya doesn't wait. She just goes down the slide immediately. Samaya, you want to go on a slide? You're going to dump the sand? Come here. I forgot to mention though, he was the one cutting the placenta and everything else. But I assume with the little snippets that I can add in, you will see what we could have captured. He was amazing. He was amazing. Climb like a fireman. Can you climb up the ladder, Ismael? No, I want to be activated. Yeah. Alright, you can be an activator. Sheesh. My video's going crazy because I'm trying to turn it off. Find this plane. What? He's an excavator or a plumber? He's an excavator plumber. He's a hybrid. Is there a purpose to this? That's how games work, they don't have a purpose, just entertain them. I remember I used to make mud cakes. Yes. I, so I, yes. I can just imagine how stretched out my how stressed out my grandma used to be. That's the funnest game at the beach. <laughs> if you saw my mud cakes. There you go. So sweet. Gotta keep her in the shade. Every time I move in the sun, she lets me know. Her has squinting little eyes. Yeah. She tends up. She's like, oh, you're disturbing my nap.